Okay. Well, we can wait for Mary Jane. I'll look. I'll look up Mark fifteen while we're while we're at it. Oh, I thought you said AJ. You said good Mary morning. Jane. All right. So fifteen twenty eight. You Mary say. Jane. What number again? Yeah, so Mark fifteen twenty eight, right? It 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 skips, and at least in the ESV, right? It goes from from verse twenty seven, and with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right, one on his left, and then it goes to verse twenty nine, uh, that says, "And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, saying, you know, that stuff." Um, so in twenty eight, there's a there's a footnote in the Lutheran Study Bible. Um, that it says, some manuscripts insert verse 28, and the scripture was fulfilled that says he was numbered with the transgressors. So what this means is that uh, there, are, there are some manuscripts, because the, um, to take a step back, uh, we don't, when it comes to, you know, the, the, or we don't have the original manuscript of, of Mark's gospel, for specifically. Uh, what we have is we have copies of Mark's gospel uh, that have been written. Um, and, and, right, we've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of different New Testament, New Testament manuscripts that, um, that different scribes and different Christians would, would copy down and then send out to, to the different churches. And so... You know, after after the you know the thousands of years, right? We we don't have the originals, uh, but we have copies of them, and we have all these different manuscripts that we kind of put together. And so, what we what we see sometimes, right? And aspect right here with Mark fifteen twenty eight, is that we see sometimes some of the manuscripts will have some differences. Um, slight differences it, it's n- none of none of the differences that we see in the manuscripts are ever you know this one says that jesus is god but this one says that he's not or you know n- nothing, nothing n- there, there's important. you know there there's no there's no variance in manuscripts that affects doctrine at all it's just like you know a different word here or there you know in this case it's you know there are some manuscripts that have that verse 28 in there that this this was and the scripture was fulfilled that says he was numbered with the transgressors um some manuscripts had that uh, my guess and i haven't <laughs> extensively studied this but just looking at it my guess is that most of the manuscripts that we have uh don't include that verse but there are some that do and so in order and so the the editors that put together the esv um, decided that since most of the manuscripts don't have that verse, um, we won't put it in the actual text itself, but they will, we will make a footnote that says some manuscripts include this. Um, and so, right, you'll, you'll notice that, you know, the addition or, you know, the leaving out of, of that, it doesn't change the narrative, it doesn't change any doctrine, right? It just makes a note to say, you know, this also fulfilled scripture that he would be numbered with transgressors. Um, so no doctrinal changes, no, no changing of the narrative, but, but that, would be, that would be my guess, is that, that most of the manuscripts don't include that, don't have that verse, but some of them do. And so, so, the, so the ESV makes a note there, um, so that we would be aware with it. I was asking them how come, I was checking uh, my Bibles, that they don't have Mark. 30, 28? Mark 15, verse oh. 28, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's only 16 chapters in Mark, so unless you're reading some <laughs> strange version. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so and, and you'll, you'll see okay, that I'm in... I'm just curious. Yeah, well, and you'll see this in, in various places throughout. Um, there, the, the account in, in John's Gospel of the, the woman caught in adultery... Um, and everybody's going to go and stone her, and, and Jesus says, yeah. you know, he who's without sin cast the first stone. He starts, he starts writing stuff in the sand, and they all walk away, and then, you know, <laughs> he says, I don't condemn you, go and sin no more, right? That account, um, you, you'll see notes in, 
in, in most Bibles that will, will also be a similar type of thing, that not all of the manuscripts for John have that account in them. And so, so the editors decided to put that in the main text, but they have notes saying that not all manuscripts include this account. And so, um, so yeah, so you'll, you'll see that, you know, through in certain places throughout. Why would and, you not include it? If it was part of his gospel, why would you not include it? Uh, well, because some manuscripts have it and some manuscripts don't, right? So, so we don't have, right, with John's gospel, just like with Mark, we don't have the original manuscript that John himself wrote. Uh, what we have are... Um, copies and copies, copies, and, copies and, and, and uh, of that, and so some of those copies had that. And my guess is that most of with with, with you know that account in John, my guess is it's the opposite of what we saw with with Mark. Whereas um, with John, that probably most of the manuscripts had that in there, but there were some that didn't. And so the editors just make a note for for us, just so we know to say, okay, right, most of the manuscripts had this, some manuscripts don't include this, Um, and so just so we have a more complete picture as we're reading through the scriptures. Does it have to do with the language, too? I don't know if it's a language thing. I wouldn't think so. I would think it's just whether it's present or not in the manuscripts, but um, that, that that would be my guess, so... Yeah. So anyway, good question though. Yeah. Right. Because it can seem kind of strange. Like, why are you skipping a verse? Or you know, <laughs> um, what what why does my book what have it and yours doesn't? Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. You paid more for your book. <laughs> That's right. The expanded edition. Well, don't, forget my, don't forget, mine is so old. It's probably original. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We have the original manuscript with yeah, us. Right there. I mean, look. It is King James, so it, it is, is it is James. what what Jesus used, and right? It was from, given to me in 1955. When nice, I was confirmed. Awesome. And my aunt wow. who was my also one of my sponsors. That's really cool. Yeah. That's great. I was two years old. That makes me feel good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, because I'm older than everybody. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the gift of your word given to us. Uh, we pray that you would continue to bless us by that word, that, that our faith would be strengthened, our understanding increased, and that we would enjoy this time of fellowship together. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, before we get into Acts, uh, we got a letter, or a card, rather, back from Pastor Ross. Um, so just kind of because we had sent him a card, and so mm-hmm. so he sent a thank you card, and it has this little note in there. Um, he says a blessed Easter to everybody, a joy and peace. Uh, and he says, dear members of the Tuesday Bible class, your kindness and thoughtfulness in giving us such an array of gifts and goodies is greatly appreciated. We'll think of you as we enjoy them. Edith is a little more forgetful, but she receives good care. I'm still weak from the heart attack in January. Uh, between doctor's visits, cardiac therapy, and visiting Edith, the time flies by. <laughs> May the Lord continue to bless your Bible class and fill your lives with his joy and peace, Pastor and Edith Ross. Oh, so, so, so just a nice card from them. Maybe that's it. Maybe in our old age we have to run around and take care of our spouse and do our, fill up our time that way. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. So we are in Acts chapter 25 is where we left off last time. What? I've had my book at 24. Yeah, we got into 25 last time. Granted, last time was like three weeks ago. (laughs) So it's it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. So. um, Did you make those? Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Mm hmm. They're delicious, so I be sure to grab one, one if you... If <laughs> page 25. I can't find it. I can't get oh. my book apart. Yeah, so I get a twi- Let's see. It should just be that next page. Yes, it should be, can... but there we go. 25. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get the pages apart. Yeah, sometimes right, pages are well, so thin. You have to... three weeks, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. They're, they're, together. they're rested together. I'll take one. Thank you. I just brushed my teeth. No, I better not. <laughs> <laughs> I did too, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're in chapter 25. So, right, we've been um, 
we've been walking with Paul. He was arrested in the temple. He was put on trial in, in Jerusalem. Uh, he, you know, he pulled his Roman citizen card to get out of the, the <laughs> lashings and interrogation. And then it's been just a, a number of, you know, he, he's brought to this ruler and he goes, you know, on trial before them. And <coughs> the Jews make their accusations. The ruler sees that they don't really make sense. Uh, Paul gets to say his two cents and then he gets sent off to the next ruler and then, you know, rinse and repeat. Um, and, and we left off last time with uh, Paul appealing to Caesar, right? That um, I believe it was Festus, uh, right? Festus was, uh, and, and Festus was one to, you know, try and keep favor with the Jews. He wanted to, you know, have them, and, you know, on his side. And so he was going to, you know, if it was okay with Paul, he, he was going to send him back to Jerusalem to, uh, to have him go under trial there, uh, which if we remember, right, this, this is exactly what the Jews wanted because they were going to try to take him out while he was being transported. Oh, um, not there, not right. There, there. So he wasn't, he wasn't even going to make it back to Jerusalem. Okay, um, and so um, Paul says, no, <laughs> uh, I, I appeal to Caesar. As, as a Roman citizen, I, I appeal to go to Caesar. And so Festus says, okay, well, that's the law. So off to Caesar, you will go. Um, and so now we're, now he's going to, you know, we're, we're going to follow him to, to Caesar, which again, right, we saw this is the fulfillment of what God said. God told Paul that, that you will go to Rome and, and, you know, preach before Caesar. So, um, so this is all part of God's fulfilling. Um, and, you know, God uses all of these plots and ploys and, you know, rules of the day to, to, to make this come about. Twist, so twists and turns. That's right. That's yeah. right. So uh, let's, so we're going to pick up at verse 13. So if someone could read Acts chapter 25, verses 13 through 22. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came into Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom when I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I, I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver a man to die before that he which was accused have the accusers face unto, to face, let's see, the, yeah, and have license to answer for himself. All right, um, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll do without the microphone. It'll just be my phone audio, so. Good thing you're all here. You guys will be able to hear me fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, so, right, so they start talking, Festus and, and Agrippa. Uh, Festus lays out everything that's happened. Um, and, and like we've seen when, when one, you know, ruler talks to a ruler of, of a higher rank, you know, they, he put, always puts a little bit of, of spin on it. Um, you know, and, and, and it's, it's kind of fun important. that, right, yeah. Um, that right, that, that he asked them to make their case against them, you know, and, and we see right, verse 16, I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accuser face to face. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing, right? You know, mm -hmm. make yes. sure that you don't, you, you got to hear both sides. He had the opportunity to make his defense. Um, and they, they, and so they, they come together. I made no delay, but on the next day took my seat in the tribunal and ordered the man be brought, right? I am, I'm doing my job, <laughs> yes. right, with, with haste. Um, when the accusers stood up, they, they brought no charge in his case of, of, of such easels as I supposed, right? He's, okay. you know, because remember, he knows that, that Paul is a Roman citizen. And so naturally, Roman leaders, you want to 
you know, speak well of their Roman citizens. And so, you know, oh, well, these Jews, right, they, they brought these accusations, but I, I knew that it wasn't going to be of any substance, you know. And, but I wanted to let them, you know, you know I, I'm the benevolent, benevolent leader, you know. So I had to um, pretend to listen to them. Right, yeah. So right, we, we see that kind of schmoozing, look, yeah. how, look how good a job I'm doing, King Agrippa kind of thing. Um, and, and he speaks to the, the content of it, uh, of the dispute, that they had dispute with their own um, religion. In, it's interesting, King James having superstition there, um, mm -hmm. that if, you know, that kind of, that carries a different tone to it, that, you know, oh, they have their little superstitions yes. about their, mm -hmm. their beliefs, yes. you know, that, that aren't true, Jesus. right? Um, so that's, it's interesting there. Um, about a certain Jesus, right, yeah. who, who mm -hmm. was dead, uh, but Paul... You know, affirms. Uh, yeah, affirms there. ESV has asserted to be to be alive. Well, um, either way, and and we we see this. This is a, a neat thing that we see here. Um, we we see this in other historical documents written by you know Roman leaders and Roman historians uh, that aren't Christian, right? So mm -hmm. so they're what we would call hostile witnesses. Uh, that people who don't want to prove that, or aren't setting out to prove that Jesus is alive, or that Jesus is, you know, died and, and rose from the dead. Um, but they're just recounting history, and in doing so, they, they mention Jesus, and that he died, and his followers view that, that he rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so there are actual historical documents, both by Roman historians and even by Jewish historians, that, that reference Jesus and his dying and his supposed being raised to life. And so, um, so, so right, we, we see in these documents that, first of all, that Jesus was a historical person. Some, some atheists, some people will, in trying to, uh, d you know, say that Christianity isn't true, oft, sometimes they will go to that extreme to say, well, we don't even know if Jesus was a real person or that he actually even existed, but he's just a myth that, that, that Christians made up. And so we can point to not only Christian historians, but also these, these rulers. Jewish and, and Roman historians and rulers and who, rulers. who mention this Jesus, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, and, and those cool. people don't <laughs> yeah. want, the, right? They're not setting out to, to prove that Jesus is real and rose from the dead. They're just accounting for what happened. And so they mention this Jesus. And so we can point to that and say, yes, Jesus was a real person. He did exist. Um, and so, so, so we, we, we see stuff like this kind of scattered throughout different um, histories and letters and that kind of thing. Um, and so, right, so this is the, the center of, of their dispute, right, that, that Jesus died and, and Paul says that he rose from the dead and is alive. Um, and so, um, right, he says that, you know, being at a loss of how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go back to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding them, mm -hmm. which again isn't the, the whole case, the whole truth, right? The, the Jews had said, hey, you know, we're going to take him back and, and handle him, and, and, and he kind of was going to let them do it. Yeah. Um, but he says, you know, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything else, you know, as, as the, as the ruler I, I am, I couldn't investigate any further. So I asked if he wanted to do that. Um, but he appealed, uh, to go to the emperor. And so, uh, I ordered him to be held and protected until I could send him to Caesar. Mm -hmm. Um, so, right, so, so he lays out everything before Agrippa that this is, this is how I've handled things. This is what the situation is. No, now it's in your court. <laughs> um, and Agrippa says, I would like to hear the man myself, right? And I, I, I want to hear him before we, we send him off to Caesar. And so Festus says, yeah, great. <laughs> you can hear him tomorrow. Uh, and, so, um, and so that's sort of the, what we will see with the rest of this chapter and into 26 as well. So any questions on, on this exchange? <clears throat> All right, well, let's go to the next section then. We'll finish up the chapter. If someone could read verses 23 through 27. The next day Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and, and, great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking military officials and prominent men of the city. 
At the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. Festus said, King Agrippa, all those who and all those who are present with us, you see this man? The whole Jewish community has petitioned me about him in Jerusalem and here in Caesarea, shouting that he not, ought not to live any longer. Hmm. I found he had done nothing deserving of death, but because he has made his appeal to the emperor, I decided to send him to Rome. <laughs> but I have nothing definite to write about this. But I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that, I, so that as a result of this investigation, I may have something to write. For I think it is unreasonable to send a prisoner onto Rome without spe specifying the charges against him. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So Festus again, right? He's he's just trying to do his job. As no, best he's he trying can, to get rid right? of this problem. That's what he's trying to do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So so King Agrippa com comes in, right? They they get all set up, and Festus publicly, you know, but before King Agrippa, which he's already talked to, but before King Agrippa publicly in in front of the court, right, says the the whole situation. Um, that the, the Jewish people were making accusations. They want him to be killed. Um, I haven't found anything against him deserving death. Um, and, and so he's appealed to, to the emperor. I don't really know what's going on, why the Jews are so upset with him. Mm -hmm. um, but I need to have something to write to the emperor. I need to have yeah. some reason to <laughs> give to him why, <laughs> why I am sending yeah. this man to, to, to talk to the emperor. And so... King Agrippa, we brought him before you so that after we examine Paul, then I'll have right, I'll have more notes to be able to put together a letter to the to the emperor to Caesar, so um, that we can get rid of this guy. So we can send him off. Yeah. Or get rid <laughs> um, of him. I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah. This. This is. The, yeah. Right. Get get rid of the problem. Move move him along so that he's not in our court anymore. I'll take him. Um, so, um, and that's what we're going to see in 26. So, any, any questions on Festus's announcement here? <laughs> you are very thorough. That's but nice. I keep <laughs> thinking of Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> with, I know. with these, with these names. <laughs> Just but, see, they, but see, they were taken right out of the Bible for that, for that TV series, too. Mm -hmm. Because the names, I mean... Because Festus, now how many times have you ever heard that name? And there was a Festus, too, on that TV show. Okay. <laughs> okay, you don't remember it either, but, you well, know. It was a Fester. But I, I'm older than all of you, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In a few weeks, they'll be even older. Oh, when's, your, when's your birthday? On um, Mother's Day this year. How oh, exciting. Oh, nice. Yeah. A double celebration. A double celebration. Nice. All right, well, let's get into uh, chapter 26 then. Uh, let's see, how far do we want to read here? Uh, if someone could read verses 1 through... Uh, let's go through 8. Paul's defense before Agrippa. So Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I shouldn't eat that cookie before. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am going to make my defense today against all of the accusations of the Jews, especially before you are familiar because you are familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. <laughs> my manner of life from my youth, spent from the beginning among my own nation and in Jerusalem is known by all the Jews. They have known for a long time if they are willing to testify that According to the strictest party of our religion, I have lived as a Pharisee, and now I stand here on trial because of my hope in the promise made by God to our fathers, to which our 12 tribes hope to attain as they 
earnestly worship night and day. And for this hope I am accused by the Jews. O king, why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? All right, so, so Agrippa gives permission for Paul to speak, and Paul begins to make his defense. Um, he starts off, of course, by buttering up the king a little bit. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that, you know, I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa, I am going to make my defense today, right, against all the accusations that the Jews have been throwing at me. Uh, and he says, especially because you are familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Um, Apple polish a little bit. Yeah, well, and we, and we see in, in the footnote here, right, an interesting point in the, in the Lutheran Study Bible yeah, footnote. Sure. Uh, it says, Agrippa's great-grandfather was Herod the Great, oh. um, who, was, who ruled in Judea, right, during the time of when Jesus was born, okay. and oh, wow. the very Herod who so, tried to have him killed, right? So, yeah. so he's, he's so, really there. Yeah, yeah. so, so yeah. he, so he would be actually familiar with yes. the happenings of the Jews. His during... grandfather would have told him if he wasn't already born and saw it for himself. Right, he would have heard it down yes. kind of the family line. So, so we, so there is that tie there. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and so he, he's kind of you know using that as a means to encourage King Agrippa to say, right, you, you, you are well aware of, right, you are knowing, you, you have knowledge of, of what's happening. And so, hear me out. Um, you know, listen to me patiently. Um, and so this, this, you know, verses four through eight, uh, we, we get kind of Paul's typical first step in his defense, where, where he says that, you know, according to the, the, the laws of, of the Jews and, and how they say we are to live and how to act, I've done it, right? I, I, I am a, a Pharisee of Pharisees, right? I, I, you know, even according to the strictest codes, right, I have, I've lived according to that law, right? That, that I, you know, that this, this is what I, I have done. Um, and, and now I stand on trial because of my hope in the promise made from God. Right, just the the way that he phrases that that it's it's not that I'm on trial because of false doctrine. I'm I'm not on trial because of something evil I've done, but right, I'm on trial because I have hope in God's promises. Right. <laughs> I noticed that. Um, That's yeah. That right. That and and that is why he's on trial. Um, but but just that he phrases it that way to really you know, it really takes the edge off of the the jews accusations and it makes the jews look like mean bullies right <laughs> that that saint paul simply just has you know this hope in 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 god's promise of sending the messiah and and they're wanting me dead because i have that hope right that that seems silly right um that they're doing this um you know made by god to our fathers um to which the 12 tribes hope a, a, to attain as, the, uh, as they earnestly worship night and day, right? And he says, this isn't just me coming up with this, but this is something that the Israelite people have been placing their hope in for generations, right? We're still waiting. Um, and, and so... Unfortunately, night and day. Yeah. And so, right, that this is, this is that hope. Uh, and it's, you know, and for this hope, I'm accused by the Jews, O king. Um, the, this hope in Christ. And then he, he has this question, right, in verse 8. You know, why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Right, we're, we're going to yeah, see that. that? <laughs> we're going to see, um, I, I believe we're going to see that Agrippa, when, when he kind of responds in this later, and, and will we'll say, like, you're, you're crazy and, 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 and talking about all this. And this isn't the first time he's had this, this news that, you know, how are you speaking of someone being raised from the dead? And so Paul here, right, he, he asked this question to say, you know, is it really so far-fetched that, you know, you people who, who supposedly believe in God, right, is it, is it really so far-fetched to believe that God, Almighty God, could raise someone from the dead? Right. And, you know, he, he, he asked this question with the assumed answer being no, right? It, it shouldn't be so far-fetched, right? Look in, you know, in all the Old Testament, Right, what God has done, right? First of all, he created everything simply by speaking it into existence. Yes. Okay. And then, right, he, 
you know, he brings the, the Israelites through, through the Red Sea out of slavery in Egypt. He, he feeds them manna in the wilderness right. and provides for them. Um, and, and, and provides for them walking through the, the wilderness for 40 years without their sandals wearing out or, or anything oh, like that. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, I thought of that. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, so, and he's providing for these people. Um, he's, used, he's worked through the prophets to, eat, to raise people from the dead, right? You know, the, the widow at Nain's son, while Elijah is, is, is going out, right, that he died. Or I, I think it's Elisha, I, one of those two. Um, that right, the the sun dies, and and God's prophet, by the power of God, you know, raises them to life. Um, you know, Elijah when he battles the prophets of Baal, you know, you know, he calls down by by God's power fire from heaven to come, and and so God has done amazing miracles and and things throughout Israelite history that that the Jews would be well acquainted with, mm -hmm. uh, that they would know, um, and so he says, you know. If our God can do all of that and has done all of that, is it really so hard to believe that he could raise Jesus from the dead? Right? Not, not even talking about how Jesus is the Messiah, that he's God himself, or anything like that, but simply the fact that God could raise Jesus from the dead. Anyone. Right? Jesus, the Jews say, no, that's not true. And, and Paul is saying... It's not so that sad. hard to believe, guys. If if you have the pre, you know, <laughs> the, you know, you have the beliefs already throughout the Old Testament of who God is and what mm -hmm. He can do, mm -hmm. right? This is an easy step, right? You know, God God can do this, guys. Um, it's not that hard to believe, guys. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's that's kind of what Paul's getting at. Um, and at, here at we here. are. How many years and, later, and we we believe it? Right? Yeah, and 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 yet, you know, Paul down, Paul is it? you know on trial because of this um and so he just sees this as ridiculous right why <laughs> why am i on trial for this why are you guys not believing um, thank you most of you so <laughs> okay one more <laughs> right you. all right one more it's probably like my fourth or fifth but... it's addicting nope, they're delicious no, by the way counting. good good <laughs> All right, so so yeah, so so he gets there so far, and he's going to then continue. Um, he's going to continue to talk, and then eventually get into uh, retelling again, because he has to basically tell every ruler his conversion. So we're going to hear of his <laughs> conversion again. Um, so uh, if someone could read uh, verses nine through eleven. I used to believe that I had to do everything I could to oppose the very name of Jesus of Nazarene. Indeed, I did that. I did, excuse me, I did just that in Jerusalem. Authorized by the leading priest, I caused many believers there to be sent to prison, mm -hmm. and I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. Many times I had them punished in the synagogues to get rid of them to curse Jesus. I was so violently opposed to them that I even chased them down in foreign cities. Yeah, so right, the, the point he's making here is that right, he's not a, a lifelong Christian, right? You know, some, sometimes that accusation is made against from unbelievers against Christians who were born and raised in that faith, right? They say, well, you were, you were born into it. Mm -hmm. And so, so of course you just you know, took it hook, line, and sinker. Um, if you were born into a different belief, then you wouldn't be a Christian, right? If you were born into a Muslim family, you'd be a Muslim, right? You just go along with whatever this, you were raised as. Um, does that make a difference if you were born into being a Christian? It could, no, it doesn't. I don't. It. it I. We see it as a great I mean, blessing. You right? have a they, choice. Still, yes, you do. Yeah, I mean, you can. Yeah, you certainly even if you're raised as a Christian, I don't you can feel choose bad about to reject being it or anything. In the church. No, and you shouldn't, no. right? They, they, tr that accusation is made to try and, you know, invalidate your faith or the authenticity of Christianity. Um, which, if anyone would ever make that argument against you, you can always flip it and say, so the the people who are born into atheistic evolutionary families and they believe and they're atheists then their, their atheism is in, is invalid too right and and then they're like well no but yeah. you know so so that's it that's an easy argument to flip on its head yeah. and dismiss mm -hmm. but but they'll they'll do it as as a kind of 
gotcha move to say, right? To try and invalidate it. Um, but, but it's a great blessing, right? That, you know, that you are raised in, in that faith and you have that from, from the ground up. And raised um, Lutheran because my grandmother was Catholic. Oh, right, yeah. And now my sister Laura is Catholic. I don't know why she's doing that. We were raised. Sorry, I'm <laughs> that's okay. aggravated at her. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Yeah. But yeah, right. So, so you know, if if anyone would ever say it to me, right? The, oh well, you were a, a Christian your your whole life, and that's why you're Christian. I say yes. God be praised. Yeah. Right? That, that I was born into this God and be raised praised. in that. I got her um, that. But right. But and so so some people use that argument. And, and so Paul, want, you know, in order to even further emphasize the, the Christian, his Christianity, and that Christianity is true, he says, right, I was vehemently opposed to Christianity, right? I was a persecutor of the yeah, way. Right. I, you know, I arrested people. I, you know, when they were going to be voted to put to death, I cast my vote that they would die, you know, mm-hmm. that, that this is how much I was against the church against Christianity, against mm-hmm. Christ, mm-hmm. Um, and so he 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 says that so that people then probably can't make the argument of well right you this is what you've always been right, right? he says oh, no I have been against okay. it but then he's gonna go and tell of his conversion mm-hmm. and he's gonna say but even right. though I was against all of this Christ came to me I was converted I and was just now, gonna ask and you now that. I believe yeah. right mm-hmm. and so so he's gonna say that you know then tell of his conversion to, to show that. So that in combination with what we just read, mm-hmm. he, he's going to use to say, this is the real deal, right? That Jesus is Lord. Um, mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so that's what that's, you know, he's, he's setting up for, for his con- to telling of, of his conversion yeah. um, on that road to Damascus. So, uh, so let's go ahead and get into it then. Uh, if someone could read verses 12 through 18. On one of my journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, O king, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. All right. So, so we, we get some... A different translation. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and we, we, we see, you know, a little bit Red expounding letters. upon what Jesus said to, to Paul. Because, um, you know, when, when we read of it earlier in Acts, we... we do, Really, all we hear is, right? Jesus appeared. He said, "Why are you persecuting me?" Right? You know, you're. I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Go into Damascus, and and you'll you'll hear more later. And so, so here, Paul tells you know a little bit more of what uh, of what what Jesus is is saying. Um, you know, this this phrase that he that that Jesus uses, right? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Uh, it is hard for you. To, to kick against the goads, right? You know, at, I, when I first read that, I was like, what, what in the, what's he talking about? Um, and thank the Lord for the Lutheran Study Bible because they give a little bit of note here. Um, so so that, that phrase, it says it's a Greek proverb. Um, so, right, it's interesting that, you know, that Jesus here, he's speaking in this, this you know, this Hebrew dialect, Aramaic, um, and yet he also references this, Greek proverb um, mm-hmm. to show that you know Jesus Knew is all knowing mm-hmm. and and he you know he doesn't just work through Hebrew or Aramaic mm-hmm. but also through Greek literature and, and all this kind of stuff you know he's he's able to do that kind of stuff yeah. 
Um, and so it says a goad was a pointed stick used to guide or drive certain livestock, right? So it was used to, to guide livestock in a certain direction. Um, and then it says that Jesus may have meant that Paul's opposition, you know, going against the, the goad, mm -hmm. uh, was futile, uh, or that Paul needed to repent of his sin of opposing Jesus and believe in him instead, right? So, so he uses this phrase, this phrase to say, right, in everything that the scriptures laid out, right, that, you know, the, the goad was set, you know, to, to drive them towards Jesus as the Messiah, Right, that's that he is the fulfillment of, of all that the Old Testament is teaching and pointing to. And so when the Jews are saying no, Jesus isn't the Messiah, right? They're going against the direction that the scriptures, the Old Testament is is pushing pushing them towards. Um and so so this so when Paul's going to Damascus to persecute the church and, and to go against Christ, he's you know, he's kicking against the goats, right? He's he's going against that way. Um, and so, um, so that's the kind of that imagery that, that Jesus is using there. So, so the footnote helped me understand that because I didn't know what it meant, but, <laughs> but now I do. So, um, so, right. So that's, that's what, you know, a very short summary of what Paul is, is doing there. He's going against the direction he should be going, um, right. And to kick against it, right. He's, he's actively fighting against the, the goads that are trying to direct him. Um, and then, right, you know. We, we get kind of similar thing. Paul says, who are you, Lord? Uh, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. You know, rise, get up. Um, and, then, and then he gives him the, his, his purpose, really, right? That I, you know, but rise, stand up your, upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have, se in which you have seen me and to those which I will uh, appear to you, uh, right? that, um, right, I've, I've called you, I'm, I'm bringing you to faith so that you will go and witness to the world, right? Okay. Tell, pe tell people of, of what has happened to you here mm -hmm. on the road to Damascus, uh, which he's done multiple times now, right, before all these different rulers and, and different, different crowds. All um, part of his growth. Yeah, and, and right, and so I'm going to send you to all these people, right? Um, I'll appear to you, delivering you from, from your people, the, the Jews, and from the Gentiles, uh, to whom I am sending you, um, to, to open their eyes that, so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. And so we, we see from Jesus here, you know, kind of the, the, the revealing of how, you know, a lot of people will try and say that, oh, well, right, Judaism and Christianity, right? They're, you know, they believe in the same God and they're, you know, almost one in the same religion. Um, Jesus here, by Paul's words, doesn't see it that way, right? He sees that, you know, that the Jews in rejecting Christ, that they are, they're not walking in light, but they're walking in darkness, right? Then that they're, they're, you know, um, right? They're, they're not under the power of God, but they're under the power of Satan, right? That, that, Satan has used this rejection of the Messiah to to keep them in darkness, um, and really them rejecting the light. And so, um, you know, there of course we we both believe in in the Old Testament, and we and we hold those scriptures, and they say they believe in the God of the Old Testament. Um, but the key that they miss, right, is that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is God Himself. Um, that that's you know that's that missing part. Um, that is the cornerstone, right? That's the foundation. Why um, is it so hard for them to believe? Why is it so hard for them to believe? Um, because what your daddy a, taught you and your mom taught you, that's what you're supposed to believe all your life. Well, and it's, it's hard to say. Of course, it's going to be, you know, different for everybody. Right? Right. I can't read their hearts, um, which is probably a good thing. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, yeah, you're right. People always ask, like, oh, would you love to be able to read minds? I'm like, not really. No. That would be a, a, a scary thing. I'd <laughs> keep me in the dark there. Um, but, right, that, that the Jews, right, so, yeah, so, somewhere along the line, they, they miss the, in the, the prophecies in the Old Testament of um, that, that the Christ would 
have to, you know, suffer all these things and, um, and that we see this in the person of Jesus. Um, that's the way his father made it happen. Right. Well, and, and, and that's what's prophesied, right? We, we exactly. see in Isaiah, right, that, you know, we get the, the, the songs of the suffering servant um, that, that talks about Jesus' death, right? Isaiah, um, I forget the verses, but in Isaiah 52 and 53, right, we, we see, you know, this, this servant of God um, that, that suffers and, suffer. and is, is called to do this. Um, and, of course, that, that is Jesus that fulfills that. Uh, and so, so, so for some reason, the, the, uh, a lot of Jews, not, not all of them, right? God be praised, we have the Messianic Jews, Jews that, mm-hmm. yeah, that, mm-hmm. that see that Jesus is the Christ and, mm-hmm. and they still consider the, themselves Jews because their ancestry is Jewish yes. and, and they still live in Jewish culture, right? They're the apple those of things. his eye. Remember um, them when they came? Yeah, and, and so, but but they get the promise, right? And they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, the, you know, why, why they reject that, um, I mean, we, we see that what we see in, in the scriptures, right, is that, you know, the reasons why the Pharisees rejected, and that's largely because they were jealous of Jesus and, you know, the crowds that he was mm-hmm. getting and, and the, the greater influence he had, the less influence they had, so they didn't have as much control. And, that drives and me so, nuts. And so they... <laughs> well, it drives them they're nuts too because yeah. they weren't listening to him. And so, right, so they, right, we see on Good Friday, right, they're the ones who are, you know, you know riling up the crowd to, to get Jesus to, to go and die. Taking and so stones and handing them out. And so, you know, there, there's probably a lot of Jewish people in that day that didn't believe in, in Jesus and had this hostile reaction to mm-hmm. Paul and the, and the other apostles because their chief priests and their scribes, right, their Pharisees, told them and taught them, you know, Jesus is not the Christ, right? Don't listen mm-hmm. to anything that they say. And a lot of people just kind of follow along with that. Um, which is which is why in um, in the epistle lesson for this last sun- on Sunday, um, Saint Peter right he he's preaching to to the Jews and he talks about how how the people when they when they killed Jesus that they acted in ignorance right that they they didn't know necessarily they were just kind of riled up by by the the chief priests and the Pharisees and so then he calls them to repentance and and believe and 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 some of them do. Others don't and get mad and, you know, arrest him, Peter and the apostles and that kind of thing. And so, so he, since, the, the, since the time of Jesus and his resurrection, right, the, the Jewish leaders have been kind of catechizing their people to say that Jesus is not the Christ. And so it's possible that that's the root that then has continued in most of the, the Jews today, that it's just, well, this, is just, this has been what's been taught to us. Um, and, 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 and here's, you know, and as time goes on, there's more time to look at the scriptures and say, okay, well, you know, here's how you can twist these scriptures to, to make it where, oh, Jesus doesn't fulfill this or, you know, still waiting. those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, waiting for Elijah to come, mm-hmm. right? So well, Elijah so hasn't come back yet. Them. Um, mm-hmm. that's a big one, right? That, oh, well, Elijah hasn't come hasn't back come yet, back and yet, he has yet. to come back and before Jesus does. And for him at the dinner table. Yeah. Right, and, mm-hmm. but instead, right, we, we see, you know, from Jesus himself, says that, that John the Baptist is that second coming of Elijah, um, which then, right, he comes, and then, and then Christ is there. So, um, of course, but they, the Jews reject, because it comes from Jesus, and they, they don't hold to the New Testament like we do. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, right. So that could be the root. It could just be, yeah, that we were taught this way. There, it's hard to answer. You know, it's the the unbelieving heart. You know, the sinful nature in us wants to wants to reject God, and so, um, so it's easy to fall into that sometimes. So, so we pray for them. We right? pray that they would, you know, because that right. It's just that one key, right? If if they would just have, you know, that that Jesus is the Christ, right? That would just unlock everything for them. Um, but it's that one thing they miss, and unfortunately, it's a very big thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But. Crux. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So yeah. So so Paul right tell, tells of his conversion that he's being sent to to these people uh, to turn them from darkness to light to bring them under into the the power the the reign of God uh, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in in me in Jesus. Right. That that there is there is forgiveness of sins even for those people who who murder Jesus. Right. Even those who who killed the author of life. Mm-hmm. When, when there is repentance, there is forgiveness. Um, and, and having their sins forgiven, the sins are, are washed away forever, which is the case for everyone who is forgiven. No matter what we've done in the past, if we are repentant and, and pray that God would forgive us, he always forgives us, every single time. Um, and so, right, we receive forgiveness of sins, and because we are forgiven, then we are counted among the righteous, and, and there, you know, our names are in the book of life, and, and we are uh, saved, and, and we have a place in paradise with mm-hmm. Christ and with all believers. So, um, so this is that hope that, that Paul is called to on, on the road to Damascus. So the hope that he's on trial for. <laughs> um, so any, any questions on, on that part there? All right, we've got five more minutes, so we'll re- we'll look at this next paragraph. So we get so this so that was the end of Paul's defense that he makes. Um, or no, not not true. <laughs> um, he still has some more to say. Um, so uh, let's read verses. If someone could read verses nineteen through twenty three. So then, King Agrippa. So, so then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent, and turn to God, and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some of the Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day, so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying that nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses have said would have happened. That, that the Messiah would suffer, and as the first to rise from the dead, would bring the message of light to those to his own people and to the Gentiles. All right. So yeah. So he, having told of his conversion experience uh, on the road to Damascus, the message of hope that that Christ calls Paul to. Uh, he says, so, King Agrippa, right, I told you all this, and so I was not disobedient to what Jesus told me to do, right? I, I listened to what God instructed, and I simply lived that out, right? That, that he, he declared it, I, you know, I declared those things in Damascus, then I went to Jerusalem, <laughs> then I went throughout Judea, and right, all the places we saw on his missionary journeys that he, he goes and proclaims this, this message. To this day. <laughs> right, yeah, that, and, and he's continuing to proclaim it. Even there, you know, while he's under arrest, right, on, on trial, he's, he's proclaiming the gospel. Even to this day. Yeah, and, and so he, he, he was seized, and the Jews tried to kill him, um, he says, to this day I've had the help that comes from God, and so I stand here testifying, uh, right? That he, he recognizes that God has preserved him on, on the way, um, because there's multiple times that, the, you know, the, the Jews would have killed him, right? Even, even there, right, right after his conversion, when he's, when he's preaching and teaching in Damascus, right? There, the Jews have a plot to kill him. They, you know, they're at the gates ready to, to kill him, and so... The, the disciples have to, you know, lower him, Paul, by night out of a, a hole in the wall, right, to, <laughs> to, to, to get him out and sneak him out. Um, and, and, you know, multiple times his life has been threatened, and, and yet God preserves him and, and brings him along so that he would continue to, to witness the, uh, f- for the gospel. And teach them, too. Right, absolutely, yeah. And so, so he says, right, God has been doing this, uh, I've been testifying to both small and great, right, you know, to people of, of high importance and also to, you know, peasants and poor people and people of, you know, seemingly little importance, um, you know, and so I, I testify to these things. And, and he ends here by saying, right, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses 
said would come to pass. Right? I'm not making new stuff up, but I'm, I'm simply <laughs> communicating and confessing and teaching that which we find in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It's fulfilled in the New Testament, right? Fulfilled in Christ. Mm -hmm. But everything I'm saying has been attested to in the Old Testament. And so really the Jews should have no qualms with what I'm saying because everything lines up with what they with are book. supposed to believe. With their book. Yeah. Right. And so, and, and that message scroll, is, but. right, yeah. <laughs> and so, right, that message from the prophets and Moses is that the Christ must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, uh, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. But, right? he, but he wasn't the first to rise from the dead. Did, did Lazarus rise from the dead? So, right, good question, right? The, um, so when it says being the first to rise from the dead, um, this isn't... Um, just a simple matter of, of, you know, right, with Lazarus, right, he rose from the dead, but he would, that wasn't eternal, right, that, he, he was raised to life, but he would die again, mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there, there's a, you know, a, a few individuals in the Old Testament who were, who died and were, were raised to life, um, but they would, they would die again, um, but Jesus is the first one to, to, to rise from the dead to everlasting life. Um, that, that Jesus, right, by, he, so he, right, he sacri he's, he's sacrificed on the cross. Um, and, and then he, he is the, the first one under that new covenant, under the, the sacrifice that he has given, he is the first to be raised to life everlasting. And so, so that's what he means when he's talking about the, the first to be raised. Um, not just to be raised from the dead, but to be raised unto life everlasting. Like it was supposed to be in the garden. Right. And so, um, so yeah, so that's, that's what he's saying there, that he's, he's raised first to life everlasting, and, and, and then we will, we will all follow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. on the last day, we will be raised um, and, and, and follow in that, that life that, that he has. So. So that's what he's saying there. But good, good question, because yeah, that can seem mm -hmm. hey, that doesn't, that doesn't add up. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's what he's getting at there. And so that's the message that that the prophets and Moses spoke uh, to be. So any questions on that before we call it a day? <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and stop there. Um, so we'll pick up uh, when we meet again, um, at verse 24, 24. Um, this, we get a response from, from Festus at first. Um, <laughs> you can't get over that name. I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so, so we, we won't have class next week. Oh, <laughs> I, see, know, I, we know, I know, I we know we're go. going back. That was my next question. Um, yeah, we have the, we're hosting the a PALS conference again, oh, okay. um, for, for new pastors. And so. Um, so we're, we're a neat be, church. So we're going to be hosting that, and that goes through Tuesday at lunchtime. So, so we won't have class this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday we, we should be back at it, um, at least for one week. Um, and then we'll maybe have to skip again. But <laughs> so, so no class next week, but the following week we should be back on. So listen to announcements at church. Look at news yeah. and notes. We've got dates in there and stuff. Right, so. Right, 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 right. Um, so yeah, so keep that's the there. last line on this page of my book. Oh, oh my yeah, <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> so I have to leave the bookmark where it was. That's right. That's <laughs> it. All right. Well, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the gift of your word that we get to read about the the faith of of Saint Paul, uh, how you worked in him to to bring him out of his unbelief and, and hatred of, of you and the church to, uh, to, to loving you and, and serving the church, even willing to be arrested and, and face death in order to proclaim uh, your gospel. Uh, we pray that that gospel would, would have its way in the world, that, that people would, would believe and, and turn out of darkness and into your light, uh, that they would join us and all the faithful uh, in paradise one day. Uh, bless us and keep us steadfast in your truth, uh, that we may live lives that are pleasing to you and, and loving to those around us. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks, everybody. And give Pastor a beautiful birthday today. Beautiful birthday.
We will sing happy birthday. Oh, it's your birthday. It is my birthday. It is your birthday. That's right. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear pastor. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Thank you. That's thank from you my very daddy. Much. <laughs> Forget to thank yourself. Pass out those cookies. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's what you brought. You brought cookies. Oh, so oh. Ellen brought these. Oh, so we've oh, got I we've see. got two kinds of cookies. So right. you those. And I was to... supposed to bake a cake, but I blew it. <laughs> oh no.